This video contains content sponsored by John Wilson Blades and MK Blades. Opinions discussed in this video do not reflect the views of John Wilson or MK. Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Jennifer Kirk. And I'm Dave Lees, and this is our World Championships recap. We have it's voices, Dave! We do. Your voice is it's, it's less masculine than it was on Monday. I know, I'm getting better, like, every day. <laughs> so, literally, you guys, we were silenced. I couldn't, I woke up, and you know the scene from The Little Mermaid where she's like, that was me, and I had, like, really bad anxiety attack because I couldn't talk. Dave, the same thing happened to him. So, all of the skaters, your prayers were answered, now, we were uh, silenced. <laughs> True. Now, I heard that bronchitis isn't contagious, but whatever. But bronchitis has been going around, so it's whatever the cold is. That well, and then turns. I got tonsillitis, where I'm like, am I eight years old? Do we have to, like, remember? I haven't had my tonsils since I was three, honey. I don't know. Oh, that's probably why you didn't get that, because if I think that's yeah. contagious. It was, it was much, and I tried to coach when I was in Boston, and I was up all night, and oh, bless. But we're back, and we're happy, and we're very happy to be here. And we have so many things to discuss before we get into this game. First of all, I think you guys- My new seen, bag. I know. My, <laughs> so Charlie White time. was like, I love your new bag. Oh, that's really cute. I, people would see saw me at Worlds when I was trying to get this signed. I was mortified, of course. <laughs> so we just talked about when we were in New York at the figure skating in Harlem. We got this one signed. And yeah. Dave was walking around with his little clutch. Okay, so let me talk about these bags. So I coach here in San Diego. And when I started coaching, I noticed by the side of the boards, literally there were like 20 of these bags just lined up. And they were so cute. They had like their little tissues in it, their CDs, all their little gimmicky things that they need for on the ice. So this is Kiss and Cry Angels. You can go to kissandcryangels.com. And these bags are perfect for skaters to bring out on the ice. Parents love them because it keeps everything just organized in one spot. You have this main compartment here. Put for in your tissues and your tissues. phone and your music. Yeah, there's these little compartments on the side for like your cell phone. And your gloves. Your gloves. Oh, yeah. So we all get <laughs> skater snot. And then on the side here, they also have this clasp that goes to your Zuka bag. Another um, promotion there. But that you can hook it up there and then take this little bag with you. So what we did, Dave and I did, two things. We got these bags signed for you guys. So his signed by some of the stars of the world champions, uh, world championships. I see like Megan, Jillian, and Bob, Eric, yeah. Alyssa, Sisney, and then Sisney. this is signed by Jenny Kirk. <laughs> I know you're gonna pay the big money for this, like, but Michelle Kwan, Sasha Cohen. We have so many of these great people that were in New York. You gotta Eric sign that Davis, guy. Charlie yeah. White, well, I'll sign it. So if yeah. you go, two things. First thing, if you go to kissandcryangels.com starting Monday the 18th, so this Monday through the end of the month, the 30th of April. Buy any of their bags, you get a 10% discount if you put in the code TSL10APRIL2016. Let me make sure that's right. Pause. Yes. TSL10APRIL2016. APR2016. APR2016. Let's and, repeat that. It okay. is going TSL, to TSL. So, okay. Kissandcryangels.com. Find a really cute bag. Another thing that you can do, you guys, and a lot of skaters, you can like bedazzle the bags and like make it all personalized. Oh, so like Kirsten could do it. Yes. And I see, and they put like their little keychains and stuff. Okay, so anyway, kissandcryangels.com, TSL10, because it's a 10% discount, APR2016. And 10% of those sales go to help TSL on the road. But if you want one of these bags, because these are the bags we've been carting around. You can also go to eBay. We're doing an eBay giveaway for these bags, these signed bags. They come in a pack of two. You can get both bags and that those proceeds will help TSL on the road because we have some great things planned for the off season. Yes. Sorry. And um, I also have, I will be writing up um, an interview that I did with Dick Button and we, we may post the audio. We're going to go into creative mode with that. Um, this week, I just finished my MBA assignment. This Pardon? week, so I am out from under, as Brittany would say. I feel very much relaxed. So, very I'm like, good. okay, we are, the creative juices are flowing, people. So we are ready to go. We have our voices. And, I think yeah, and talking about creative juices, fantasy, we've decided we've signed on with Puritans for a few more months. We're going to do some gymnastics fantasy for the upcoming National yeah, or Olympics. Yeah, you didn't want to be today for this. Honey, I have been following the gymnastics. I know that I let people down on the skating this season. Um, 
I think I won every single one except for one. Can we just talk? No, I need a oh, moment. It was more than one. No, I think like, it was just one. It, maybe it was two. It was Canada, Canada and Russia. Canada, yeah, Canada yeah. and Russia. Okay, my favorite places. But yes, we're going to be doing that. But talking about fantasy, we do want to talk about our winner from World Team Jenny won. Cody Hazen, Parabens. He got seven out of the eight, like, matchup head to heads, right? Cody, because I always see him. He likes all of my stuff on Instagram. But then I found out he was Team Jenny, and that's a letdown for me. It's I not really, a letdown. I, it means he's like, smart. We respect him more because of that. He was paying I'm attention. I need love. I mean, come on. Need, you know. Give me love. Josh, how is Joshua Ferris doing? Do we I don't know? know. Does anyone know how Joshua Ferris is Please doing? Please comment below. <laughs> Yeah, leave us a comment below. No, All right, I'm but parabens to Cody, let's talk about this. Because another thing I want to touch upon, we have so much information as we head into the ladies at World. 12 out of the top 12 women, all in John Wilson or MK Blades. Just saying. Just we have Just a very saying. nice sponsor doing very well. So the Russian women, they're primarily gold teal, but we have Ashley and Gracie. They're in Pattern 99 and Pattern 99 Revolution. So Dave and I are going to be trying out our gold teals this week. We're very excited. Winner, Medvedeva, discuss. World record. Love her, champion, absolute. Did you watch the documentary on her in the Terry? Okay, so it's in Russian. So you, apparently no, you no, got no, no, the no. subtitles. My computer, they like took the subtitles away. There are two different versions oh. of the video. Can you send One me One of them, over? the subtitle works on, yes. Okay. You need to watch okay. it. Like it's really, the coach was and in the coach. Oklahoma City or something bombing. She was in the Russian Ice Ballet, I believe. She, she was coached with Tarasova. I was reading her Wikipedia because I was trying to, you know, it's the translation and this, and I know that she was touring the country. And I know that back in the 90s, especially, some of the skaters that toured were kind of taken advantage of, whether the Federation got a cut of their money or something. And they were staying at the YMCA right across from the federal building. So when Timothy McVeigh bombed it, I think she said she was in the bathroom, like brushing her teeth in the morning. And like, they were like thrown back and like, no one knew what the heck was going on. You're in a country that you don't know. I mean, All it was, right, yeah. So, She's a like, fierce you know, woman though. I mean, not watching, not from watching, just from watching her, um, with her students, she seems very strong and fierce. And I think with me, and likable though, she cried a couple of times here. It was really interesting. Um, and her daughter, Diana Davis, who I posted a video a couple months ago because her daughter is a, um, I want to say she's novice. Right? Yeah, she's like novice level, novice junior. She's like 13. The video was going into her puberty and the mother was tough on her because, you know, she's like going through that awful time where like you gain a bound, you lose your drums the next uh -huh. day. And apparently she had a 103 fever the day they were filming. So she was having a bad day all around. She's just like crying the whole video. The mother is like, your knees need to work. You need to work harder. And like, oh, it's like awful year. Like, Terry Tupperitz is your mother and coaching you, and you're, like, with Medvedeva, and you can't jump today, and the cameras are there. So she's deaf, so that's why Medvedeva does the whole thing where she's, like, oh, because... Oh, like, a tribute to her daughter? Yes. Aww. And apparently Lipnitskaya was supposed to skate it, but they go into that Lipnitskaya's mother and a Terry, like, fought, and they did... Lipnitskaya's is that why she did... left? They, that's what they, they insinuated, this, you know, allegedly, yeah. perhaps. Allegedly, that this is, I don't know. They said the last two years, the relationship wasn't good. She, um, but it's interesting. So it's a tribute to that. And she said that the program is supposed to be that she is learning that the world isn't so bad. They said that she has level three hearing loss. Like she can hear if someone's like really loud and she can lip read, but it's just very impressive. So she has it. a little bit of hearing. Yes. Okay. Well, so, impressive as well with Vitova's long program, all level fours for all of her elements. I mean, new world record. And the fact that I think we saw a little bit of the hiccups. In, I mean, it was a fine short program, but you could tell she was a little bit tense. The fact that she hung I on this season. I saw the hotel. It was not okay. Oh, it so, was not okay after? So I was going to like the hotel store to get some caffeine and right before we were interviewing David Wilson and we was there and I, like, I didn't even like notice, like I just like went and it's like, whoa, like I hadn't seen her the whole week and like, you know, when you see these people in the flesh and you haven't like, yeah, ever seen you're like, whoa. oh, wait, like, you're not on the YouTube screen. Yeah, that's, and I was like, oh, like good job. And she was just like, you could tell like she was not happy like about that. her she short respect. program. I knew she was going to nail it. At that moment, I was like, oh, I like her. There's something about her, her eyes, her demeanor, just the whole. She's so tough. And I feel like, again, the fact that she handled the pressure from one event to the next. Before we move on to Ashley, though. Be oh, 
Wow, she had a practice moment. Apparently, she did a triple sow, triple toe, triple toe, triple toe, and like right in front of Gracie Gold, four triples in a row. <laughs> like, hey, the day before the free skate, just like hey at the worlds. I mean, this is a girl. I, I love her. I have to say, there's something about her. Moxie. I think she's around <laughs> for a while. Like, she's not going to give yes. up this title easily next season. But the question now becomes Tuk Demisheva because Pogorlaya doing so well here, whom we'll get to in a minute. Thoughts on Tuke? Like, I mean, what what's going to happen? Predictions? She pulled out of the challenge comp with an injury. I think it's going to be hard for her to come back. I think it'll be hard for anyone in Russia to be down and come back. I think she's done it before. I mean, obviously, she was really out of it uh, in Sochi. She could do it again. I think she's had injuries if she rests up. But I think it's going to be hard. The Russian women were incredible in Boston. And I think it's going to be difficult for her. And they have plenty of others, but I think that Medvedeva, I know that there's been so much criticism of that they're here one season, gone the next. I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case for her. I think that some of this is situational with some of them, and I think with Medvedeva, she has a lot of talent. If you go back, she's always been a very good competitor, and I think she has better technique than Lipnitskaya did. So, I don't, I don't think, I don't know if her score was the great, if it was the greatest program I've ever seen compared to Yuna Kim. But, um, you know, that's... It was good, though. I mean, it was great. Yeah. I, I, and, and I don't know if Yuna deserved that huge of a score. No. I mean, I think everyone has end of the season inflation going on all over. The scores, I thought, in Boston, the ladies, by the end of the week, I thought the judges were just getting outrageous. So it was Well, it was you strong. talk about her having the highest score. Ashley actually won the PCS in the long program. She was, I think, fifth in the technical score. So, I mean, there's a little bit of fairness there, I would say, going on, because it did seem like Ashley had the performance Ashley did have the performance and she had the crowd. And you have to think, I was thinking like if this event were in Japan, the crowd would be muted for mm -hmm. Ashley and probably ecstatic for Miyahara. And maybe Miyahara would have gotten extra points. I'm like, would Miyahara, because they all skated relatively well. Yes. And I'm like, I bet based on what, what continent you're in, what the judges are pushing for, what everything that, you know, the results could have been slightly different depending on where the event was. Well, we always... Probably yeah, we always said heading into this season, I mean, this was going to be the moment for the American yes. women. This was it. I mean, if you're ever going to skate well at a world championship, this yes. is the time to do it because the door, like you said, it may not be open. And Ashley did that. Um, and they both looked incredible in the warm-up. I have to say, they had the probably two best warm-ups of the event. They were just nailing everything. And you hoped that they would both skate well back-to-back, -back, and obviously that didn't happen. The one thing I noticed is that that arena got so loud and I'm thinking backstage, they have to be hearing this. Mm. You have to be. There's no way. I mean, Medvedeva skates. I mean, one after another, Medvedeva skates. The score comes up. And then Pogorelia, and you don't expect her to yeah. do so well. Yeah. And the one thing is when Medvedeva skated, well, when Medvedeva was getting out, they were announcing Riddy Nova's score, and she, like, plugged her ears so that she couldn't hear it. I don't know if it worked. But uh, I thought, like, I that was just so interesting that she didn't want to know what mm. she got. And I thought... What are Gracie and Ashley hearing backstage? And I think, obviously, Ashley said that she did know that Gracie obviously didn't skate that well. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Ashley Wagner smelled blood this week. She went out there, and she did it. She didn't like our tweet about that she didn't train full programs, which she didn't. Um, I and, and that's why I don't understand. I just have to say, I don't understand why she has any beef with us. Because nothing <laughs> – no, I'm being honest. Yeah. Nothing in that tweet was mm -hmm. at all – controversial. We didn't say anything about an injury in that tweet. I don't understand. I mean, it was so no... we had heard from coaches at her rink that she had been injured. She yeah. had been cleared before that. She was doing sections and working up. And you know what? Ashley delivered and she shut everyone up and she had her moment and it worked for her and congratulations. I think you could take that away. So, I don't know. I mean, listen, Jenny, the skaters at these events are so stressed out and this is not real life. There is no, like, they're not going to a job on Monday or school where they have any reference point to that. Gracie apologized to America, you know, like after. We have to and discuss I, that because that poor woman, I just want to yeah. say to her, do you understand I'm America wasn't watching? watching. <laughs> like, no. let's be honest here. America <laughs> doesn't care. I mean, no. we, and even if we were the Olympics, you're skating for yourself. Yeah. Like, it has nothing to do with... My life moved on the next... I felt fine an hour and later. And we're I all thought... so self-absorbed anyway. Like, <laughs> let's be honest here. We're more I'm interested sorry in... sorry for her. 
you yes. know, I didn't feel our to, hearts go out for, to her. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's touch upon. So Ashley was wonderful. Congratulations. Pogo Alaya, we didn't see any falls. I mean, that was a disappointment, but Pogo she was really, Alaya, really great. The thing that I love about it, here's a woman who's had a horrific season. I mean, come on. Yeah. This has not been her year. She has stated well at nationals, but I mean, at HK, yeah. rough. Rough. Europeans, rough. When your coach she can't did. even stand by the boards because she's afraid of how horribly you're going to fall and hurt yourself. So her coach did like keep around. But the thing is, she really was very like kind of ticked about her scores in the Kiss and Cry, visibly so, both programs. And I thought, here's a woman who hasn't been expected to win all season. She skated cleanly. She got a good score. She may be on the, on the medal rostrum. Why isn't she happier? She thinks she's going to beat Medvedeva or she thinks she's going to win the short. That's why she skated. So after the press conference yes. in the short program in the press conference, she said, you know, this is only 50% of, of the event. Yeah. Like she's like, I'm not, I'm pleased, but I'm not going to like go celebrate. And I like that mentality. Because I do like that too. Yeah. It, it seems like she has expectations. To me, her skating is still inward. I thought technically she was very good here. She can always have more stretch. You know, she's got long limbs, but they don't fully extend. She doesn't fully own her body the way she could. And I think that's the one thing in her performance. It was muted um, here compared to the other ladies. I think had she performed more, technically, yes, she would have beaten Ashley and she would have probably, you know, overall as well. I mean, technically she did beat Ashley, but right. she would have finished ahead of her with that. I just think that her, she hasn't learned to really use her body fully yet. I think that's what's the only thing that's really holding her back, but that's incredible that she skated the way she did after that season of way. I mean, she wasn't going to miss a thing in that free no, skate. And I think we should remember she's only 17. She seems to have gone through puberty. So she has time now to really develop. So she is really pretty. And Gorgeous. I always think that she looks older than she I does. Know, like in, a, in her twenties. She yeah. looks like a film actress to me. Yeah, she's oh, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. But, but she has time. All right, let's talk about that. And, I, and she and Medvedeva are very tight on the podium. Yeah, they were it all... Was cute. I, it was cute. I like that there are factions in the Russian women, and these two are very... It's a cute friendship. Yeah, I like they like it. this yeah. thing. I don't know what this that's is. That's the... So that's her Samson and Delilah arm. So that's like the choreography, hey. and they like this. Hey. Okay. So let's Parabens. Discuss, parabens. Let's discuss Gracie, um, because her short program was so, so wonderful. And yeah. then the long program, it just looked like she wasn't there in her face. And that, you know, the program doesn't do it when you don't give it. It's almost like she gave up before the music started. Just, you know, they talk about fight or flight. It looked like she was just, she left before. I thought she looked okay at the boards. I didn't think that she looked ramped, but I think if, you're, if there's one skater that was really affected by the crowd, I think that she heard it. Apparently Frank was in her face when they were walking out of the mm -hmm. tunnel. He was like in her face. Like, like trying to like, her. yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, she got there. I was, you know, I'm mean, obviously all eyes were on Gracie. We we're all seeing, is she going to do it? And I'm real, and I feel bad that we're focusing on this because I think that it's become this situation where Gracie misses something. People talk about it. Obviously, she hears people talking about it. It gets in her head even more. And it's kind of become this Vanessa Atler, Sasha Cohen situation where it's yeah, yeah, and and the is she going to mess up again? it's become a bigger thing that it even needs to be in her mind. And I don't know how you recover from that at a certain point. I think you need to shut the blinds, take time out, do, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I think like, the biggest thing too, when you talk about her apologizing to America is just skate for yourself. Let mm -hmm. Ashley have the moment now. Let the pressure be on Ashley. Like just go in and do it for you the next two years. I don't even think people were rumbling coaching changes. I don't think she needs any of that. I just think she needs something. It's an, an internal thing that only she can give to herself. And yeah. I think we all just love her and want to see her happy. Yeah. And I think, um, obviously she took this really hard. I was really impressed that, so she was very, very upset yeah. later she, and she really held it together when the cameras were on her. I thought that that was... Because that great. like holding pen. So guys, it's literally yeah. like a pen. They put him yes. in like a play pen. And you, to have to sit there and to see the other two Russian women so chummy and to know Ashley is skating now. She the last good. person. She yeah. probably, you know, I mean, but come she, on. This she is, was, yeah. she was very gracious. And it, I thought she was very gracious. But I think the, the fact that she did apologize, I mean, very sweet girl puts way too much pressure on herself. This moment, she didn't win Worlds. Disappointed for her. It's okay, life, life goes, goes on. on. 
Yeah. Yeah, she's on Stars on Ice now. And um, I think going forward, what does she need? I think if she wants to keep skating, she needs to do it for herself and kind of take ownership at that point, maybe get her own apartment. I think that her sister might be there. She's definitely probably not competing again. She may do go to college or she may do shows. And I think it may be Gracie's time to kind of, you know how Jeremy moved out and Alyssa moved out. And, you know, I think that that might be time for her to kind of grow and as a person and everything and just take the pressure off of the skating and just believe in herself. She's so, and I think that's the hardest thing is, and like, she's so good. She won that short program. She could have won this event. And I think that's probably why it hurts her so much too, but she just needs to believe it. Also shout out to Doug Rosano. So when she missed that combination, (laughs) I was watching on YouTube the morning after just see him like, because, you know, as a volunteer, you can't clap for anybody. You can't show anything. So he did the whole, like, two-step forward, two-step back. Like, honey, I can't. We love you. Uh, it was – everyone – I love Doug. I love seeing him at these events. Um, but for Gracie, I just think her eyes kind of darted left and right, right as she got to the starting position. And it. And the, the unfortunate thing is her placing fourth is I think that she kind of did get held up a little bit. I was thinking about what place I would have her in overall. I'm debating if or not I'd have her ahead of Redino. I would have Miyahara certainly ahead mm-hmm. of Gracie. I don't know if I would have Re- if Redino. This program was awful, Jenny. I mean, it was it was okay. Clean. So let's talk, well, all right. Let's talk about Sajoko really quickly. I think the yeah. one thing I mean, she's so consistent. She just they need to work on getting those jumps higher and fixing. The one the thing I think is unfair for her is that the judges people made mistakes throughout the season, but they gave her those big marks, and the judges are really not using the IJS well because they're giving people the marks when they don't deserve them, the GOEs, et cetera. I think it's, I, my heart goes out to her in the sense that she's been getting feedback all season and then she goes to Worlds and they kind of hose her a bit or they kind of, I think, marked her correctly, but that she's not getting that feedback earlier. I think that you would work on your job, so at least know that it's coming or not have expectations that you're going to be on the medal. And then it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. There was an article that, you know, it's politics and everything like that. And I don't think that it necessarily is. I mean, Tim Gable was saying, you know, great skater, you can't put a sheet of paper under her no, jumps. It's, and, and it's scary to watch. I mean, she's so quick on those takeoffs that it's it's unsettling, I mean, to watch even when she gets the jump around. And she's so polished and her skating is so good, but the jumps are really – especially when you're in a final flight with these women who are doing – Triple, 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 yeah. all over the place. Um, but Raddy Nova, so she in person – She's dynamic. She does have a quality that does grab you. It makes you want to watch her. But she's just, I think, picking that long program music that is in and and of itself, particularly in America, like kind of eye-rolling, cringeworthy. And then the lack of stretch this season. It's just So I have to say, both Titanics, and I love you, York, and you are fun and great. (laughs) Your Titanic was also a blessed moment where everyone was just kind of in it for the journey. I mean, I think it was so, I mean, they were both so memorable. I have to say, to see them in person, it was, it was much. It was really, it was an event. I, it's, I think the Titanic programs are akin to how Charlie White feels about hip hop and ice dance next season. (laughs) Watch our figures getting in Harlem interview. Yes. Yes. Charlie White. You know what I noticed is that, so he usually gives interviews with Tanner, with, with Meryl. And I don't think he would have told us that much had Meryl been next to him. And he just, like, let it rip in front of Tanith, whose dad is a PR executive. Like, Tanith probably... I always feel like Tanith has those opinions, but she's, like, really good at suppressing them. And, like, Charlie just let it rip. And you can see Tanith's face is like, oh, he's, he's going there. Yeah, like, he I really, like that. Come on, the skating lesson. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> come, come chill with oh, that. And his mom loved your hair, by oh, the way. Hey. She was all- about it yes jackie and the moms were checking out your hair and discussing it we love you okay um i didn't love now asada's placement and performances because she was so good in practice um that day that we watched that practice on that tuesday she was triple axel triple axel and great short program or she didn't miss the axel in the program okay is it what what do we do now I, i don't know Okay. Is it age? Is it? I think if anyone can come back, she can will herself to do. It just seems anything. like you talk about a Pogorelia season. It just seemed like she, she was so great to start at the Japan Open and then never quite got up. Like and she Pogo thought Lea. about retiring at one point during the season. Well, I mean, once you have those thoughts, it's yeah, it's yeah. hard to get yourself back in it. But I, I mean, a beautiful skater. Yeah. A beautiful program. 
I think Mal does well with a weird Tarasima program. I don't know. There's like, something about that. Uh, she, it brings it out of her. Yeah. Somehow. It makes her fierce. She, yeah. Yeah. And I think she kind of needs that. Remember, she did a Laura Nichol like, Leave a Strong program in the same color of the same dress that she, so she can never wear light purple in a free no. state. Does it go, yeah, she needs to be like, ugh, and yeah. doing, uh, yeah. Like, like I a think, dark, what was she had? Like she had like a blackish program, or dark purpley black with like ruffles. That was good yeah. for her, or maybe red. I don't remember. Gabby Delman was great though, as was Mariah. Yeah. Gabby oh. Delman. So boss. Mariah's birthday, happy birthday, yeah, happy birthday. Can we just talk about, so I guess somebody that I know, snapped a photo and was sitting behind the whole arena standing when Mariah's done except for one person who Paulina Edmonds oh my god I have a photo of it in my phone Wait, for a second I was just running through my head I'm like did I stand I'm like what well, I think I did like, yeah I, I love Mariah but I just thought that was interesting subtle shade when you can't even like stand just saying she withdrew um, why was she there why go there why put yourself through that torture I wouldn't want to do it. I, I have wouldn't to want to go and force myself to stand either, but you know. It may, you know, and it could force someone like Paulina to get ready, you know, or get amped up for the next year. Although people are rumored that she's going to college, also rumored that she's getting a training mate soon, but we oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. About to, I don't think we're allowed to announce that yet. Are but they I think, dating? I don't know. I really think, I don't know. Okay, keep going. Apparently, I mean, so apparently he has an intense dad. She has an intense mom. That could be such an interesting time at the rink. I mean, so her mom coaches. Apparently his dad teaches an off-ice jump class, even though he's not a skating coach. Anyway, really interested in what's going to happen there. I mean, we keep heard, you posted. Yeah, keep you posted. Like we can say things. Yeah. But, but um, um, Mariah was fantastic, too. Mariah was fantastic. I thought that this was the one time the caller was kind of nice to her. Mariah was great. Some of the jumps... We're questionable um, in and person. And the boot breaking again. I mean, so she kept that same boot. I don't, it's time for a new pair of boots. Um, if I were her boot maker, I would feel like I was the Carnival Cruise Line of boots at the same time. And I would, I would pay Mariah not to wear my boots. I'm like, if you're going to break every time. you're going to break every time. Or I would have been like, honey, you really, you want to stay in that boot? <laughs> like, are yeah. you sure? I mean, you trust that Mark is fantastic and he did a phenomenal job at Nationals, but you think Nationals to Worlds, that's what? That was like two solid months of jumping and training on that boot. That wasn't the original leather. Something may happen. Just saying. Just, Even mean, with the best boot ever. And I think the accents are phenomenal. She did such a good short program and really had such a moment in the free skate. And the crowd just loves her. And she really, she lights up. She loves that program. I loved Gabby Daleman. The thing, she's not as refined as the other skaters, but I was, she has this like athletic grit in person that really is very exciting. And I think if they can continue to harness that, I thought Ready Nova was really slappy. I know that you were saying that she has this She quality. has a little thing that does get you. And I could see yeah. when she was itty bitty, how you're like, oh, you could excuse some things. Now it's kind of like, because her limbs are longer, it's more jarring. Jar yes. Is that a word, jarring? Yes. Yeah. Also jarring is Rika Hongo's posture in person. I, didn't even, I, I don't even have any notes. I do. I was just uh, going to go Jenny, I mean, it was the same building where Jason had his moment. Yes, the crowd in America loves Riverdance. We're all, we are all those people. The posture is just, it's unforgivable. And, and the Adea skates and the box. Oh, it's just all it's much. wrong. It's, it's, much. it's much and it's wrong. And it's <laughs> nice girl. Nice girl, yes. Do we know if she's a nice girl? We don't, but that's what we say when we have, you know, we want to have, we have we'll nothing give you nice. the benefit of the doubt. You're a really, yeah. you're a sweetheart. Okay, you know, okay. So again, all of those women we discussed, John Wilson or MK Blades, yes. Tara Okay, hey. Javier, a repeat performance and situation of the year before. And can we just say a big pair of ends to David Wilson? He got almost all tens for choreography in that long program, yes. and rightfully so. He, this that was a performance. I loved it. I, I love it. guys and dolls. I love Javi. He had such a moment in person. Da -da 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 he, I think, should keep doing this program forever. It was fantastic. I. He had to, so I had a friend come watch the men, who's not like a big skating person, although she watches us, but she was in love with Javier. As she should be. And then Javier and like Miki, like you know when people, like you walk into a room after you're world champion and people want you to like bow or kiss. They like kissed in like the hotel lobby, except it went on for like. Oh, hey! 
a long time. There it is. Like it was like they were in my car for a little bit. Yes. <laughs> I love that Mickey Ando. I'm I just saying. It. I'm just saying. So we want to do an on I the road so with them. I didn't see Mickey Ando in person. I know me uh, either. Really, she was there, and I was looking for her. And like, she's obviously my favorite guest, like ever. We need to have them back on, and I want Mickey to know how she felt like he did this season. Oh yeah, she, we, honestly, I love know. her. And they've been at the beach. They vacationed with all of Javi's family and little sunflower. I saw that on Instagram. So I mean, he was. He was wonderful. Question though, as we yeah. talk about Hanyu, do you think the fact that he skated such a strong short program but didn't beat his world record got in his head? Or do you think it didn't matter? Because he seemed a little disappointed in that kiss and cry when the score came up. And I think we were all like, oh, it's going to be so. It was a good score, but do you think. I think it had the emotion that we saw previously. I felt in person that it was wonderful from an athletic point of view, but I didn't feel it i didn't know if maybe just that night he was more focused on the jumps rather than because he he had some misses in practice i mean he's incredible to watch in practice but he yeah okay what happened between him and dennis ted <laughs> because i was reading i was like on my deathbed and i'm going down instagram dennis ten is much on instagram he had this whole talk about it jenny because okay first of all if you the, the true story about dennis ten i did like google the war right, between Japan terrible. and Kazakhstan. Frank Carroll, who is so rough on everyone, has a soft spot for Dennis. He never even knows where Dennis Ten is, or if Dennis is showing up next week. Frank's yeah. assistant, who does his scheduling, and never knows where Dennis is going to be. So we have a group TSL chat, which if you think we're blunt on here, you have no idea. Anyway. Wait, can we just talk about the topics that go on in this chat? It's much. <laughs> so I had... Um, well over a thousand messages from the TSL chat when I put my phone off for an hour and 10 minutes during the men's free skate. I turned it back on and it took a couple minutes and then there's a video on my Facebook page where it's, my phone is just erupting. Anyway, so anyway, they never know what Dennis is and based on his Facebook posts and remember when he was at the doctor in Italy and, and was he, and then, cancer he, and these emotions. And then we were able to find out that he was actually back in California because we could see a palm tree in the reflection of, he was like at a cafe, we could see the pot in the window. That's all we knew he was back in California. But he was not training well, not doing his programs before the event, according to people We're gonna get a mean now. tweet now, Ashley Wagner. I'm just saying that everyone said like, well, his free skate at Worlds was kind of how he had been training. So that mean it was okay not so what happened something happened he was in the middle of a spin it was hanyu's run through hanyu's going into a jump obviously can't do the jump because dennis is spinning and the japanese federation they were going to file some sort of complaint against dennis then frank comes out gives this interview kind of dissing hanyu in my opinion did you read that well, I knew that Han, you kind of like punched the boards. He had a moment. But I mean, I can understand that. You're under full stress. It's the yeah. world. And you're not necessarily angry at Dennis. You're just angry at no, the fact that the like, you wanted to do the jump. Yeah. yeah. And this is your run through. You get one a day of, you know, yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not Han, you didn't file the complaint. No, it was the no, Federation. No, so no. he has nothing to do with this, people. No. But I thought it was interesting. Frank kind of said something, and I'm paraphrasing here, but there is a link to an interview where he kind of talks about, he was like, well, he got in that collision at Cup of China last year. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, you got to read this. It was a little bit like, honey, get your foot out of your mouth. Like, we're going to get some mean tweets. Well, hey, okay, so Dennis had to Well, he'd be a good up. wife. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> keep going. Can you publicly explain what you meant or... So he, he, he was, that Tim Gable's fiance, and we went out for my 30th birthday the day before. I was an hour after um, imbibing, I mean, and like recovering. And like, I just meant that she seems perfect. And I was just going on and- She was, it was somebody a, that you would want to marry. Like she'd be yes. a good, like supportive person in your life. Not that she'd I be- so how old these people are. Apparently she's 18 or any, I don't even know. She's been around forever. I have no idea how old any of these people are. Like, I don't <laughs> No. All right, moving on though. So oh thoughts, anyway, thoughts on Hanyu. Anyway, Dennis 10 death threats? Because I don't even, like, what, how does, like, what, do you like, do you dress it to, like, his, like, Instagram? Or, like, are they, like, how are you getting death it's threats, Dennis? It's not funny. I'm not laughing about the death threats. I'm and laughing I don't even know where he is. Like, I don't even understand. And I mean, obviously, and if that was happening during threats? the event, I Were they think... real death threats or was it, like, someone being mean to you on Twitter? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, 
Like, I mean, a death threat is like, I will take your life, right? But I think yeah. even if it's me, these skaters have to get off social media at these events. Yeah. It's not yeah. healthy. It's not, don't. Shouldn't be writing a five paragraph Instagram post. No, and focus on your long program, land your quad cell. Um, but Han, you obviously not what he was looking for. I need to talk about something though. Yeah. Because as we discussed Jin, three judges give him 8.25 for skating skills in his long program. I don't agree with that. I think I, he was getting the four quad bump up. Ma said that she would have had him behind Grant Hodge to him, based on the skating. She's a, <laughs> she also would have had Patrick. She said, and Hanyu, based on his performance. Oh. Ma was a tough judge that week. She was really. <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay, but. Performance, I felt in person, Hanyu really let the program go. Yeah, in yeah. Person. With Jin, I felt that there was never a program to begin, to begin with, with at the free skate. And then he it was tight at the opening. I mean, he got so that quad toe, double toe got over 13 points because he does it in the second half. So, I mean, I understand he's racking up the points, but to see him skate live, too, it's like he skates on stilts a little bit and he's so skinny. But if they could just, and I'm sure they will, I mean, nothing to detract from the fact that he won. It's not his fault the judges give him these marks, but really work on actual skating skills and using the ice. I would be very impressed with him next. I can't season. handle how thin he is in person because one of the skaters that was training at Toyota before Worlds, yeah. not naming names, all they were eating were mayo packets and orange juice before the World Championships. So now when I see these skaters being really thin, I'm like... Mayo packets and orange juice. Mayo packets? Oh, could you imagine how those two mix in your stomach? <laughs> Ew, like, that is the grossest So I used to hear of I... a skater eating mustard packets because there's zero calories in mustard. So she would just have mustard all day long because it was like a little bit of a something to get her stomach going. But there's no calories in like a mustard. Mayo is pure This fat. is not I... pro anorexic. Like, no. I'm... no. <laughs> but I could see like you want like some oomph, but mayo, that's so gross. I don't Ugh, know. I don't know. And apparently Han Yu loves supplements. Like apparently he has like Puritan.com. Whole... Yeah, he has like a Puritan's Pride collection. Okay. But you no, know, no, like, that's... no more going on. All yeah. right, so Jin was great. Uh, the surprise and like the spoiler for the US of the men's event was Koliata. Um He's become the new Russian second at Russian Nationals and now here. Fantastic in yeah. person. I mean, really a great skater. Yeah, I mean, together. they that uh, Nightmare Before Christmas program, they really kind of works to him. And, you know, he was really great to watch here at the event. I thought um, he probably, I probably would have had him ahead of Bully and Jim, to be honest. I really uh, thought that he did a good job. And quality to me, skating. Yeah. Quality skating. I thought that it was far uh, superior. So Patrick Chan, not... No, no, no. Yeah, not long. Before. What is he going to do? Do Have we heard? Will he be Jenny. sticking around? Sticking the around. thing about Patrick, it's like, you want to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's such a great skater. The interview quotes, he can't help himself. Like, I just, any, every time that Patrick speaks, I just want to so be there. So what quote specifically? So he blamed the ice. Granted, the ice was kind of melting in the one section. It was like, but everyone skated on that ice. Yes. And he kind of blamed his choreographer. He said, well, I made switch choreographers. You know, the short program was too hard. Well, if the short program is too hard by Worlds, they should have taken some and of those. that really wasn't where he had the trouble. I mean, no, the short I, was, he was still in it after the short program. It was the long. long was the disaster. Yeah. So... so. I mean, and I thought the judges were very generous because <clears throat> his skating is phenomenal. Yeah, I thought it was stronger oh. than I was in person. The, the depth of the edge, the depth of the power that he gets, unfortunately, to judge him for interpretation and performance when he doubled that many jumps and made that many errors and had that kind of escape was, it was, the air was let out of the balloon way earlier in the program. And I thought that he really received some generous marks from the judges. I know he was low in the free, but I thought he could have been even lower mm -hmm. um, based on how he really skated and looking at, you know, the, the components that he got uh, for some of those elements, of, for some of the components that he got in the GMS. Yeah, yeah, elements. yeah, that it was, it was a little bit much for there, but it'll be interesting to see what he chooses to do now heading into the next couple seasons. 
I'm um, assuming that, oh, also, my coach thinks that the whole problem was that the fact that he ever gave that interview before the championships where he said that if he didn't do well, oh, he, that he was going. Yeah, he put she thinks that that got in his head, that he yeah. put something in his head, the drama beforehand, ahead of time. Instead of going in aggressively, he let, like, kind of the seeds of doubt get into his mind by even having that conversation. Well, it reminds me, too, of the Gracie comment at the press conference at Nationals where she said, either it's a medal or I don't even want to, like, or it's nothing. And yeah, she got the pewter, non pewter. Like, oops, whoops. Okay, um, but phenomenal performances by the U.S. men. Adam hey. Clark in a long program. He we Adam talked to him at yeah at skating with the stars gala. He was wonderful. Um, Max, wearing his tights all week to show off his assets as and he flies to the judges. Yeah. I mean, Adam loves to tights in practice, but he didn't miss a thing. And when he's on practice with Max, who doesn't have the stretch or the line or, that he has, and even like Javier can be he, a little bit more relaxed in practice. I mean, Adam was stretching oh, all he over owns the yeah. all of his movements. Yeah. Yes, in practice. It was so funny. And he was so into the programs. Like, you know, sometimes you'll watch a skater and you think, oh, honey, like, hold on to the end. Like, yeah. I even got that a little bit with Javier because I wanted him to do so well. With Adam, he was like, I got this. I got it, honey. Like, don't even worry. I'm going. And I know he trains, which is it. just as a spectator, it makes you really relaxed. Interesting thing about Max is his quad style is not that consistent. Really isn't when we saw in warm-ups and in practice, but he pulled it together for that long program. They need to work on his face, need to continue working on the spins and get him a program. I think these programs were like a palate cleanser after the foot loose, but it's not, he's not a prima ballerina. Like, I, and I, we always have this discussion about can men be ballerinas, but he needs something that's a little bit more West Side Story-ish, like he had driving, um, but not quite foot loose. And with more transitions and more yeah. richness to them, I think. You know, they, you know, they want to step forward. I think they accomplish that. Now it's time to take the next step forward. Uh, I thought for Adam, it's going to be interesting with the quads because the quadlet still wasn't quite mm -hmm. around, and we haven't seen that yet. But I think he's working on the other quads this season. I mean, it's such a phenomenal performance there, probably the moment of his career. So you have to wonder where he goes from here. But I'm excited to see the mash. I mean, I, people wanted it in every color. I mean, I just, I, I loved it. I just, it, I loved it because Law was giving me shade in the group after I, you know, put him as my picks. Yeah. And then she loved it in person. Well, because so, he, he owns it. And I feel like it's because in part to like him owning his sexuality, who he is yeah. at this point in his life. I worry because he has said so many times, like, honey, I'm old. I'm not going to do all these quads. Get a quad. Get to a quad and be, have it consistent and do two in your program, and you're good. You're on that podium. So after program. Worlds, um, you know, I think that um, it's time for NBC to market skating. And what they need to do is they have all of these sister networks that they own, whatever. Look, you got Adam, personality. You have Ashley, bless. You've got Raphael, who is like already Papa Bear, yeah. Papa Bear, when Adam skates, he like hunches and Ashley, he hunches down on the boards. Then he's yelling, he's knocking over, he's his hand is in the air, he's pounding on the board. I mean, this man puts on a show that we haven't seen. And then afterwards, so the guards at the hotel Boston is a scary city, Jenny. Your people really like I this love This is where Boston. I get it from. So we like our rules. If anyone was, oh yeah, the rules. So the second floor of the hotel had the bar in it. And somebody needs to explain to me like what they were so upset about every night at the, the Marriott. Copley, right? Copley? Copley, Cop Marriott. Copley. <laughs> Dave thought it was Copley. <laughs> Look, you know, Copley. I'm not a local. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they would come at the night that the bar was going to shut down and like scream at everyone. Like no warning, not like a five Let's minute call! warning. Yeah. No, like... You have to leave the floor. You have to clear it out. Christine Brennan, has, Raphael has like just gotten into the bar having a cocktail and it's like time. Raphael is like holding court with reporters and everyone. And she's like, Raphael, what did you do? What did you do? Did you rebuild them? What did you? And he's like, look, Ashley's in okay shape. You know, I don't Adam Ashley. I'll talk to them about the Olympics. I don't need them for the Olympics. I could take others, you know? And I'm like, we just need a show. Adam, Ashley, Raphael, Nathan Chen and his mom, like little Adam Miller. It. And also Gracie Gold needs to somehow like work in, like they need to work in the fact that like Adam sometimes hangs out 
That was her. Like, D and Doug it. Rosado, hello, have Doug Rosado move in. Like, I don't care what he does in this show. He can narrate what's happening. Like, I just think. He will come in every week and just say, pause. And have, like, his own little Doug commentary about what's going on. It would be, it would make skating so popular. Oh, and it would make sense. The Tara, personalities Johnny, are there. Yeah, Tara Johnny, they're not doing it yet. I think we need come up the with actual the skaters. Like, two queens, an Armenian, and an ice rink. Like, what are we going to call? I don't know. Like, this Could is we just... be producers? Yes. We call us. So... We'll help you. Um, I guess this show just... would be so popular. Oh. Like, I... <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it was interesting at National. So I saw Raphael right after the men's free skate. And he came up to me. I was checking out of the hotel. And he's like, three. I got three. It was not about the skaters. It was the fact that he had three at the time. Skaters <laughs> on the world team. I was like, Congratulations. He was, and then Mitch Moyer he comes up. Me. He comes to me, he pushes me. You don't talk to me this week? And I'm like, I haven't seen you. Well, he comes, Mitch Moyer comes up and Raphael starts put, like petitioning for himself to be coach of the year. He's like, this is why I want to be USFS coach of the year. Like he was really selling himself right out. I respected that. Yes. I love him. I love well, him so Justin much. Justin Dillon's going to like work underneath Mitch Moyer and they're going to be all, pair of it to Justin. There's the whole... Yeah, let's see some some great stuff. That's happen. the job that Lindsay Weber wanted. Yeah. Oh, honey, you yeah. do not want, you want to get mad. Um, yeah. 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 Oh, and so also in other news, Corey's assistant. Did he go to Tammy? Uh, that's that is the word, and okay. that's why we haven't seen those jump videos. Okay. Because... All right. I don't know if I let something slip, so let's let's discuss pairs though because this is already fifty minutes, and we got two more disciplines and some synchro. All right, Jillian and Bob, repeat. So tell us, what did she say? So she literally knew how everybody had skated before they got on the ice, right? So I didn't see her all week. I saw her, her long suffering husband. I love him, by yeah. the way. <laughs> the morning after, he said that she was already had been talking about next season and what they were going to do and plans. And... Love it. So Jillian, we went up to her, talking to her, you know, congratulations. She was like, yeah, well, I, we watched Stolbova skate, or at least she did. I think she said that they both did, but she was watching Stolbova skate. She's in the next warm up. Like, I don't know how like they told us that they've really changed. Like they don't focus. Oh, on, honey, no. Like, but it <laughs> works for them. Don't change it. Be who you are. Right now, be who you are. But like, anyway, this is why you're. Anyway, Bob is so sensitive. I don't, and plus, uh, and so friends with Ashley. I mean, so she's watching them, and then she skated second in the group. She said that she was listening to how the Chinese did, and she knows how many seconds in and where in their music they do the quad and where they do the side by side jumps. And I just thought, oh my goodness. And she said that she knows that Sweet always misses the first. Um, throw quad that she does but she usually lands the second and it's so funny because in practice that we saw her she missed the first one and she did the second one and i think like so jillian is watching hers she has like everyone's number she had calculated the number of points that aliona needed to win the bronze and she let her know that she felt that she could be trank off and i like she's our girl i love it i mean all and can I just say about their skating, I thought their side-by-side yeah. lutzes were the best I've ever seen. Doing the quad again. He almost had a near bobble on the side-by-side -side spin, held it together. I, they were so good. And they really brought it. They got tens, I think. Um, yeah. Two tens they had for a performance moment. execution. No one thought they were going to win. And, and, but they believed in themselves. Yeah. And you got to respect that. And the fact that all of this Russian Meldonian drama and the teams coming back, they were so focused. And proved us wrong so congratulations it was very yeah nice. and i thought that they would skate relatively well i just thought that the pair yeah, i thought that the, 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 and i thought the judges would give it to the russians but they I, were the judges were giving right. the marks all year and i think yeah. that when we didn't put them higher you have to look at how the <coughs> events are being touched going into this and i thought the russians are getting the scores the judges are eating it up and i, I thought the judges were going to continue with that but the russians did not look very strong here the way they had earlier in the season. Just saying, I don't know. Just saying. Just saying. Apparently, Stobova was injured. She was shopping here, but apparently, she was the one that has been skating, but to me, she didn't look like herself. She looked more like Skate America Stobova. Yeah, that's and what she, I was thinking. Okay. Both of their yeah. their programs, I just felt very Skate America like, honey, like, have we done a run through yet? Like, you're holding on to your life. I think they have. No. So, and she, they really struggled on that twist. It was funny because everything in the short program that they had struggled with earlier season 
Cha Cha and Max the two foot on the throw. That's been kind of their thing this season. Still Bova and Klimov. The twist has always been an issue with that. It was very crashy in the short. And overall, just not, uh, you know, that kind of a performance. I actually this- thought Tarasova and Morozov should have been ahead of Stovov and Klimov. Like, I actually thought that they were the best of all the Russian teams, at least in the free skate. Um, they skated up compared to how they had been yes. doing earlier in the season. They still, they're boring as Kaka. They need to bring <laughs> some zhuzh next season because they got You know what? They don't have a diva on the team. I don't understand. Like, Yeah, like he, maybe he needs to become the diva. Where did they grow up in Russia that they don't have this person? I know. Person? She seems, <laughs> like, literally they seem like nice people. I don't understand. I think Stobov is fun. I don't know. I love her. I mean, uh, yeah, I love her. This moment is that, like, John Coughlin grew up in, like, American society where now people are afraid to give an opinion and give criticism. So though he does commentary, everything is, you know, he's very supportive and people love it. And I love John. But the funniest moment to me was he was trying to explain that Stobova was a better skater than her partner. And that's the kind of thing that you and I would kind of just like say it, move on yeah. to the next. But it's almost like when you try to say it in a nice way. He spent two minutes through the whole replays trying to explain how like, and sometimes I don't feel like he skates up to her love, but you know, looking at, he spent like two and a half three minutes. I was like, dying laughing because you like, know he's trying to, be so nice, trying to be so ice network about everything and i'm like oh just say it spit it out like it, this is worse like you're it's, yeah <laughs> it's, it's like you your foot in, is in your mouth go back and rewatch it it's one of my okay. moments of the world championships is his commentary i don't know if it was the short or the free but no i think it was, it was the, the free. short Oh, really? It's the short? I think it's the short, yeah. Okay. And um, I think it was that. Yeah, but yeah, it was great. I mean, it was fantastic. I loved it. But yeah, and then the Chinese in person, I just, I love their short program so much. It's just when they have those mistakes, and the, I think the throw quad only got them like, what is it, five points? Yeah, 5.34 points because and of we the had ball. no warning that the father and daughter were going to split up. Jenny, like, I didn't know that was going to be their last time together. I didn't like, know I was- that either. And so one is going with you. The daddy is the going with The team in the light blue. Daddy's going with Who the both girl. wear John Wilson gold seals. Let's just say yeah. that. Yeah, that was shocking. That poor, the daughter. I just think she, the consistency wasn't there. I just want to give. Want, like, do they want to get a parent? So apparently the skaters refer to the father as Shrek. I don't know why, but that's he's like so name. big. Yeah. Like okay. He's so big. Muscular. Um, You want to give a shout out to... I want to get Aliona and Bruna also in their gold medals because they were really, really good. Their first world championship together. Winning a bronze medal. Obviously, she had a couple of issues on the throws. Um, Just, it's... They throw it, but that twist is just... Whew! Um, The twist, and she is completely done twisting. Has the leg extended as he puts her down. Aliona, seeing you in the bodysuit in person was so much for me. I loved every second of it. And And yeah, yeah. and her skating, both of them, very, very good. Couple teams to mention, Luba and Dylan and Kirsten and Michael, both very strong skates. What I liked about Luba and Dylan's long program, so she... We always get nervous about our side-by-side jumps. She popped this out, but it really didn't disrupt the program. They were also getting some nines in performance. They were execution. gorgeous. That yeah, very, very good. Kirsten and Michael holding on and skating very well, too. A little bit of ickiness on the side-by-side jumps. Do Charlie and Julianne, do they need to be worried at all? I, I think you always have to be worried when it's that competitive in your country. Um I don't know what's going to happen in the U.S., Jenny, the next year. I mean, we've got Haven and Brandon with Rockney now. You have a lot of... Uh, well, and Alexa Marissa and Rose, with- yeah. It, it just... And she wrote a thing, like an apology to America, too. Well, she was she was really upset afterwards, and then she was embarrassed how she was upset because she you know realized afterwards she was talking to other people. I just felt all year it was a lot of social media the last couple of months. But they skated perfectly in warm-up. And I think that's why they had, like, the greatest warm-up. I think anyone's ever seen them have. And then that to happen, I, 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 I don't yeah. know what I'm saying. And it's just, it's, I don't know how to fix it because in the short too, it's like all season. You, it's I think Chris maybe needs some time off if he's been injured. It just seems like the side-by-sides, it's like once that doubt comes in, it's really hard to get rid of it. And Tara and Danny knew that she was sick at Four Continents and that derailed them. You know, she's still, like, the hip is now just getting back to the point. I think the first world is being national. Yeah. It was not It was a much. Struggle. It was much. I think yep. they, they deserve a little bit of a break. But let's quickly talk about some of the dance teams because the French holding on after winning that short dance. Gorgeous. I mean, just gorgeous. So I have an embarrassing moment about oh. the French that I have to, like, discuss. Oh. Just tell me, honey. Nobody else is listening. So Alex LaHaye, my favorite 
introverted bitch, <laughs> French friend um, who we adore. We're watching the French together. And I really felt that if I cheered louder, the judges would reward them with more points. <laughs> like, I really was having Like you, things. Dave Lees. They would hear Dave Lees out of yeah. all thousands of people. Well, I felt like maybe I could influence the crowd to cheer more and get more into this program. Like, I mean, you are an influencer. King just, of social like, media. Yeah. I just felt like everyone, you know, I was like, you know, this is in the U.S. We need to, we need to get behind that. This is quality skating, people. I mean, look at what he is doing out well, there. Well, it worked. <laughs> but I really was like having an out of moment. It was really, they were incredible in person. Although, I talked to Marie Frost about this. I don't think that they can count a waltz. Like, one, two, three, one, two, three, in the short. Like, it was not their moment, but they are such spectacular skaters. It just, yeah, it was. It was and it was good to see the Shibutanis in their MK dance blades. I mean, MK. Hey. Yeah, hey, and Chalk and Bates in MK as well. Um, but the Shibutanis, it was interesting. We asked them at Figure Skin Harlem. Unfortunately, we interviewed them. It was a lot of fun, and the audio didn't work. But I Alex said, Shibutani was sassing Jenny Kirk because she kept trying to find out which choreographer they're going to use. Which, and he's like, Jenny, no, I'm not telling you. I'm going to keep no. asking. Yeah, she didn't yeah. like that, but hey. Um, he loved it. Are you kidding? I, mean, I love them. It. They're so sweet. Yeah. Um, but he, he said, I said, you know, were you nervous that you had to skate last? And he was like, honey, we got to skate last. Like, he was, like, so excited about the fact that, like, I mean, they have a good perspective on it. Um, they looked very controlled in the short dance, but I thought the free dance was what we expected. Really great skating for them. And I think at this point, they've solidified themselves as the top American team, which is exactly what they needed to do this season heading in to 2018. Chalk and Bates, conversely, the face in the kiss and cry said it all after the short dance. I don't think the we facial could, yeah. expressions of her and Caitlin in the short dance. That was a moment of the world championships for me. It was it was really this bitter earth. I don't know. It was it was ice dance. It was shade. It and was he this. doesn't like me. I said hello. Just gave me a side eye. I'm sorry. It's not that I ever say I don't like you. Maybe I just don't understand the program or the conception behind it or. I'm critical of the skating, but like, I like you. I don't know you, yeah. but I don't not dislike you. Not I, dis don't I don't dislike you. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. Chalk and Bates, thoughts on them. Yeah. I thought Chalk and Bates skated really well uh, for themselves here. I think in person, they don't have the same quality. So had Andrew Poche not made mistakes in the free dance, they actually, it looks like the Canadians would have been third okay. based on the points, but Chalk and Bates, hey, they were consistent yeah. and they got that. They got that done. I uh, think the key for them will be better material. Not that their material was poor this season, I just but material feel like that they, they connect need a new choreographer. With. Yeah. Because I feel like their programs have been similar and that we can kind of see all of their tricks. Like, we know the signature moves where her arms are behind his head and he kind of drapes around. But, like, we've seen it. I just feel like we've seen it. You know, like, the, look, they gave us a lot of new moves in that haunted thing that Rokin did for them every time when she's rolling on the ice. Like, make that a free dance. I yeah, like, do, do something unique. But Capolini and Lenote... Good for them, but not good, you know, as a reigning world yeah. champion. I mean, but it, it was better than I think many of us expected. So they're not the reigning world champions. It was two years ago. But it's okay. former world champions. Oh, former. Yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. Okay. Honey, I'm, like, not that dumb. I do pay No, I thought, you just, I thought you said reigning. So Wait, I was but like, I, I meant former. Like, as a former world champion, you think... I'm just very defensive of the The French, pewter, not they're... pewter. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm not going to take away their title. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's a successful, but I don't know. She's really teeny. They're both really teeny in person. Like, they so her in dance dress was so glitzy. It was too so much, almost too much. Yeah, but it was to disguise your eye. Your, you know, your eyes not going to her free leg when the skirt is longer. And yeah, but yes, uh, yes. So, question: Hubble yeah. and Donahue, very good here. I mean, I don't love the free dance though. No, but. Okay, they did what they needed to here in terms of getting top six. Do you think the judges would ever have four U.S. teams or three U.S. teams in the top four? Could that happen? Could happen. Okay. I think Could it's going to be ever... hard. Tessa and Scott coming back. It's going to be – It's. I think there will be a shakeup or something. I think it's going to really determine on the material that all these teams do next season. I think it's going to be – not that it's like going to be completely new ice dance, but I think you kind of start next season. What are the Shibutani's going to do? What is – I mean, what are Chalk and Bates and what are – I think the judges are going to be looking for Hubble and Donahue to see what they're going to come up with next. I think that their short dance was so strong. 
I don't think that the free dance ever captured or had the same kind of magic. And I don't think gray is a color for a free dance as we saw for uh, Weaver and Poche or Hubble and Donahue. Yeah, like you need that. something dynamic like that red. Um, Piper and Paul had a great short dance. You know, struggled The free it. skate, I just think, you know, little struggles. And I just think, you know, they're... Not that they're gimmicky, but they have like, you know, kitschy, but at what point, you know, how many ideas can you come up with and what are you going to do next? Yeah, maybe it would be nice to see some pure skating yeah. next season. Yeah, I think, yeah. Well, I want to talk about really quickly world synchronized skating because mm -hmm. that also, let's just touch upon the top three, Team Russia winning it, but not winning the free skate, free skate mm -hmm. going to the Hayden Nets, Team USA. Thoughts on these teams, the top three? So the 16 Russians being Carmen, I mean, Jenny, I mean, this. My moment was though at the beginning, they all do like a jump at the same time. And then they kind of like do a dance in the middle. But there's always one girl when they do their footwork line, out of line. Just saying, there's always one. And I would have her cut from that team so fast. I don't know who Well, you noticed is. this before and you said it's always a blonde girl. Was it still a blonde? I don't know. Yes, it was a blonde girl. On the, <laughs> I'm not naming names, but I will say. I, you like also, I also got a text from Jenny Kirk that said, if you're going to have two girls do Beelman's in the center of the ice, they should be good ones. And I thought, oh, the shade. Just yes. saying that if you're going to have like a moment that you really want to like, we're going to look at the girls doing the Beelman's, not the 14 other girls skating around those two girls. Have it be like a Marina Gasu Beelman. So their footwork section was actually very difficult what they did when they, they did the 4 by 4 The one thing is that I felt that the Russians had better skating, perhaps, than the Haydenettes did. I thought that the Haydenettes got a little sloppy as the program towards the end. But the Haydenettes were more interesting. I thought that the program was just I way more interesting, engaging. It was a lot of Carmen. Like, it was I would a lot say of Carmen. 70% through, I was like, I don't know where this is going. Like, yeah. the Haydenettes, because the, you could argue there were too many music cuts, but yes. it kept you on your feet. I actually time. thought that Nexus um, had the best skating. They lost some levels, and I think it's Paul and a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they're the same team they were last year. Lee Chandler was really getting into the Bohemian Rhapsody, and I felt like the rest of the girls on Nexus were a little Canadian. Like, I didn't think that they were rocking like he was. I think that they needed more. If you're doing Bohemian Rhapsody, the whole team needs to take the theme and really rock out, and I felt like they never quite got there, and that's I think the judges kind of dumped them a little bit. And I don't think it was necessarily fair, but I thought that their skating was the best of the event. Um, I have to say, I don't, I don't understand what's happening in the Rockettes. I, so I love their short program to Schindler's List. What was it? It's, um, Lee loves the story of sorrow, he, right? Yeah, That's, he has a sorrow yeah. story. Yeah, so, um, so I really um, enjoy them. But they have like their free dance, or their free skate, sorry, is a, I think there's a rocket ship coming up. Yeah, and that part is really much. Cool. But then I don't know what's happening. Like, I'm it's following like, this story. It's nice and, like, kind of, uh, but it's, yeah. I like I the Hayden Nets. Yeah. Yes, I loved, look, those girls were cute. And they're little fluorescent. I, and they're I liked really them. sweet girls. I got to, you can watch our profile on them, too. I got to spend a day with them. And they were all the hard, hard workers. I will say that. Well, that coach, I mean, of course. Yeah, yeah. Saga, hey. Okay, it's but, five minutes for you. you know, yes, so before that's... before we go, though, I just want to do one more time. Kissingcryangels.com. Go to our eBay. You so can Meryl, bid on these. Just wanted one. She was like, oh, this looks good. I'm like, Meryl, it's not too late. You can come back. You can get oh, honey, it. yeah. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll hook you up. These are they're actually really, really good, you guys. You can stick all your stuff in here when you go to the rink. Um, it's an international company. They have stores, in, or they have a store that sells it. Also in Korea, I think Australia. So kissingcryangels.com. That code, again, TSL 10 APR 2016 to get 10% off. And those proceeds go to help us go on the road. And then also what you bid on these help us to go on the road. So Dave, what was your moment of the world championships? I thought it was going to be Cizeron. It was Javi Fernandez. Well, actually, Ooh. Ashley in the moment, I was really into it. I have to say, yeah. I was really jumping up there. Powder 99 yes. Revolution Blade. Yes, Queen, all of it. But I have to say, Javier, I think the performance of the World Championships, that was such a stunning um, free skate. I love Medvedeva, but I think Javier was just absolutely uh, phenomenal. How about you? Same thing, Javier. And also seeing Jelena Bob win again, I thought their free skate was phenomenal. And just the fact that they wanted it, they believed in themselves, and then they did it. I love that. So congratulations to all of the skaters. 
Yes. So as always, we want to remind you that if you are practicing with Hanyu, stay on the other side of the rink, hold an edge, and look, look sexy. sexy. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.